Hi, good morning. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill from Mount Horb Lutheran Church, and today we're going to dwell in the Word, uh, which is to say we're going to read a passage of Scripture and think about it, and then maybe reflect together. Hope your day is going to be a good one today. It's going to get warm out there, so I hope you can find a place to stay cool. It is Saturday, July the 11th, and today's passage we're going to look at is from Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, verses uh, 1 through 10. 1 through 10. Here's the reading. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean shall enter you no more. Shake yourself from the dust. Rise up, O captive Jerusalem. Loose the bonds from your neck, O captive daughter Zion. For thus says the Lord, you are sold for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord God, long ago my people went down into Egypt. To reside there as aliens. The Assyrians too has oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what I am doing here, says the Lord, seeing that my people are taken away without cause. Their rulers howl, says the Lord, and continually, all day long, my name is despised. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, on that day, they shall know that it is I who speak. Here am I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messengers who announce peace, who bring good news, who announce salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He's redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Here is the reading. So as you dwell on this, um, we ask the questions, what jumps out at you? Uh, maybe what questions does this passage raise? And do you experience or feel a sense of God's nudging in you as you read this? What wells up inside for you? When you look at this text, um, it's out of Isaiah, um, so it, it imagines a city that's waiting for news of battle, um, is kind of the context, you know, is it going to be good news or bad news, what's getting ready to happen, uh, how are things going, and then can you imagine in the distance there's like a, a, a runner appears, and in those days that runner would be the person to bring the news from one group of people to a next or from the front lines to the command center. Um, and so in the distance, a runner appears, the sentinels on the city walls, those are the people that are perched on the walls are looking, they go, hey, here comes a runner, uh, here comes the news, and they hear good news, that God has proven victorious. Um, and so they sense in this passage, they're seeing God's return. And so everybody breaks forth into shouts of thanksgiving. Everything's beautiful. Even the feet of the runners, it says, is beautiful. Because why? They bring happy news. They bring good news. Um, so this passage is really, uh, it's an announcement of the coming of God to comfort God's people after a difficult time that they've had. And the gospel term is used, um, gospel, euangelion, um, to preach, which means to bring or to preach or to proclaim Good news. Uh, God is coming is the good news in this passage. Um, and as God promised to comfort the people, now it's saying the promise is being fulfilled. God has come. God has done so. As I thought about this, it made me think about times, and I encourage you to do this, when, when I've experienced, uh, when you experience good news. When I was uh, taking summer Greek during seminary days, uh, at the end of a six-week intensive course, which was about, I think, a year's worth of, or semester's worth of Greek, um, on a Saturday morning, after doing six hours a day of classes, plus maybe another six hours of studying every night, uh, you walk up to the door of the classroom building, and there's a list of people that it passed, and then there's a list of people who maybe failed summer Greek. You know, you spent your whole summer doing this. Um, and to see your name on that past list, which I did that day, uh, 
pretty exciting, pretty good news. It was like, okay, whew, all of this weight of waiting uh, finally has been fulfilled with good news. And maybe you've had that result of a test as well. Or the announcement of a pregnancy um, is, is good news that we consider today. A couple of weeks ago when my family were on a Zoom, we do a Zoom on Friday nights. Um, my sister, I have a sister who's about two years older than me, her daughter-in-law um, announced that they were going to have their first baby. That was pretty exciting news to hear, even on a Zoom. Um, but, you know, there are other times where we hear good news. Say you've been in a, a, an accident, a traffic accident, and someone says, hey, hang in there. We've called the ambulance. They're on the way. Or they're here. The ambulance has just arrived. That can be good news. Um, one time in my first call, oh, 20-something years ago, almost 30 years ago, I, was, I had a member of my congregation who was a deputy sheriff over in Lexington County. And one uh, weekend, after a couple of times, I asked him, I said, hey, can I ever go on a ride with you just to drive through uh, as you cruise around? And so I went on this one uh, ride with him. He was, he was uh, we went on this call. It was just me and him in the car. We went on this call to this old uh, beat up looking trailer. And there were two brothers inside that the neighbors had been complaining about. And it turns out the two brothers had just gotten out of jail. I don't know exactly the story. We get there, pull up, um, Looks kind of ominous because it's real quiet. There's not a whole lot going on. It's out a little bit uh, in the country. And then um, my member turns to me and says, listen, I got to go and check this out. I need you to stay here. And here's a couple of codes that I'm going to be using. I'll have my microphone on. And uh, if I say this, uh, just know this is what it means. If I say this, you know, code, whatever it is, then this is what it means. So we get inside. He gets inside. I'm sitting there at the car waiting about 50 yards away. Um, and all of a sudden I hear the one code that says, help, help. And I hear this, I hear from the trailer noises of somebody getting beat up, furniture getting thrown around. And it turns out in the course of the conversation inside, um, the two brothers jumped this officer and was trying to, um, beat him up. And, uh, he called for help and it's within about a minute or so, I looked to my left and saw about. 10 cars, police cars pull up. The cavalry was coming in a way. Backup had arrived um, and everything turned out fine. That's the, the short end of the story. Help was on the way. That was good news for him. We're in a country, a situation right now where our country and the world is waiting for the good news of the announcement of the COVID-19 vaccine that is going to help us. What a day that will be when that happens. So this verse just reminds us that God is the God who promises us good news, but also delivers and has delivered and promises that that deliverance is still with us today. And do we, are we missing out on seeing it? Um, you know, this verse is sometimes used at Christmas to celebrate the good news of God's coming into the world. And so maybe today, how can I see God's good news of God's presence in our midst? Even when we see things around us that need attention, but not only how do I see God's presence, where is God in all this? How can I be the good news? There's a uh, song that we sing at camp um, that says, Have you seen Jesus, my Lord? Uh, and it goes like this. Have you seen Jesus, my Lord? He's here in plain view. Take a look, open your eyes. He's always with you. Have you ever stood in the family with the Lord there in your midst? Send the face of Christ on each other. Then I say, you've seen Jesus, my Lord. It's got other verses, but it's just a reminder that God has promised to be with us because God has come. Remember Jesus saying, I'm with you always to the end of the age. And he sent the Holy Spirit to be the presence of God with us now. And so God is with us. Do we see the face of Christ in this world today? Do we see the face of Christ when we look at each other as human beings, as part of God's human family? And if so, um, how can we say today, how can I be that face of Christ for someone else? Let us pray. Our gracious God, grateful for the day and for all that you provide for the sun that's out there for this summertime, but also for your word that continues to break into our world to bring good news. Help us to know today that uh, you continue to love us and give us strength and perseverance 
and faith to walk the path of life that you've given to us. So strengthen us today and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, God's peace. Good to see you. Have a great day.